Hello everyone. In this video, we will be talking about heat engines. Heat engines are an application of the first half of the second law of thermodynamics. It states that heat flows spontaneously from a high temperature environment to a low temperature environment. In heat engines, we have two reservoirs. We have a high temperature reservoir and a low temperature reservoir. Heat that exits the high temperature will flow spontaneously to the low temperature. But in engines, what we do is the heat that exits the high temperature, we use some of it to perform work. So QH, which is the heat that exits the high temperature environment, is the sum of QL, which is the heat that goes into the low temperature reservoir, plus the work done, which is the heat we derive to perform work. And this is how engines work. How we measure how well an engine works is the efficiency of the engine. The efficiency of the engine is the work performed by the engine over the heat that exits the high temperature reservoir. We can also rewrite this to say that QH, heat exiting the high temperature, minus QL, heat entering our low temperature, over the heat from high temperature. This tells us how efficient the engine is. Here, the process, whenever it concerns real engines, are irreversible. But, we have, but if we assume we have a perfect engine that has a reversible process, those engines are, call, are called Carnot engines. For Carnot engines, if their processes are perfectly reversible, the heat is directly proportional to the temperature of each reservoir. So we can find that the efficiency of a Carnot engine is the temperature of the high environment minus the temperature of the low, lower temperature environment over the temperature of the higher temperature environment. So let's work an example problem. Let's say we have an engine company that claims that 10 kilojoules of input at 400 Kelvin into an engine will result in an output of heat of 5 kilojoules at 300 Kelvin. We want to test whether or not this is true. Now, since we're testing whether or not this sort of process is true, what we're doing is we're comparing the efficiency of the engine to the Carnot engine efficiency, or the maximum efficiency possible for the system. If it is equal to or it surpasses the Carnot engine efficiency, we know that it violates the second law of thermodynamics. So let's first figure out what is the efficiency of the engine. The efficiency of the engine is the difference between the heat output from the high temperature environment and the heat output from the low temperature environment over the heat from the high temperature environment. Since going into the engine, the high energy is 10 kilojoules minus the output that we get on the other side will be of 5 kilojoules. So this is the energy that is going into our low temperature environment over the high temperature environment energy. This gives us an efficiency of 50%, or 0.5 decimal. Now let's look at the Carnot engine efficiency. For the Carnot engine, we use the temperature we do the first part, our high temperature environment, at 400 Kelvin, a low temperature environment at 300 Kelvin over a high temperature environment temperature. When we input our numbers, we have 400 Kelvin minus 300 Kelvin over 400. When we do this math, we get an efficiency of 0.25. We can conclude that the claims of the company are incorrect as the second law of thermodynamics will be violated. The efficiency that they're claiming in terms of energy is exceeding the Carnot engine efficiency. So as the second law of thermodynamics will be violated, the claim is untrue. It is important to keep in mind the overall process that is occurring in a heat engine and how we measure how well the engine works based on their efficiency. 
Thank you for watching and see you for the next video. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what physics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the said Richardson building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website at www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.